All right. Um, now, uh, so let's 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 start talking about the query logs, and we're probably not going to finish it today, but we'll uh, we'll at least get a head start. All right. So, um, <clears throat> what you need to evaluate systems, and evaluate is the same thing as tune, make systems better. You need relevance judgments. Right. In relevance judgments, we talked about how you generate them. Right. In track, you get a bunch of systems to run, and then you sit down a bunch of people who are going to manually look at the documents and decide if those documents are relevant or non relevant. Uh, this is one of the most mind-numbing and boring things you could ever do in your life, generating relevance judgments. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine anything more boring than that. So you don't do it very often. Um, and if you're a search engine, you work on a scale where you really can't do it. You can't, you can't afford to just because you have too many queries and too much data to work with. But as a search engine, you have these little things called users. And a natural inkling, if you're a search engine, is you want to try to get those users to generate something that looks like relevance judgments. Like imagine, so all of these users, uh, a, a good, you know, a, a guy at the at the head of a at the head of the search quality group at Google, uh, he doesn't look at users as customers. He looks at users as relevance annotators. Right? The question is, how do you get relevance judgments out of them? Uh, not how do you satisfy it, how, how do you get them to tell you what they like and what they don't like. Um, that's, that's really the goal. And of course, um, users do interact with the ranking to some degree, right? Specifically what they do is they scroll up and down and they click. They also do other things like reformulate the query, uh, but that's a lot harder to take advantage of. The simplest thing that you have is you have a web page and the user clicks on it, right? And when the user clicks on it, if you ever looked at what happens during the click, you don't actually go to the URL where you think you're going, right? First, there is a message that goes to Google that says which URL you've clicked on and after what amount of activity you clicked on that. And then after that, you get redirected to the page that you want to go to, right? The reason for that is the search quality head at Google wants to know which thing you clicked on. Uh, and that's a natural desire, right? So what they get is they get clicks. Uh, they get queries. Uh, they have your session ID. They know what documents were shown. And you know where you have clicked in that ranking and, and at what times you have clicked in that ranking. So that's the data that, uh, that, that's the data that they log. Um, and the critical thing is clicks are nice, but they're not relevance judgments. Right? Just because you click on a document doesn't mean that the document is relevant. Right? So I could have been searching for... Um, 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 a linear time algorithm for plateau extraction, and then I saw a, and then I saw a picture of a really beautiful kitten, and I clicked on that kitten. Right. So does that mean the kitten is relevant to my search? No, not at all. It means that at that point the kitten was more appealing to me because I'm a flawed human being. Right. So clicks are not relevance judgments, uh, but they do generate preferences. Right. If I click on a certain document, if this was my ranking and I clicked on the third document, uh, what that means is at that point in time, I preferred document three to the other documents in the ranking. I preferred document three to D2, I preferred document three to D1, and I also preferred document three to everything that came below it. All right. So when you get a click, you don't get relevance judgments, but you do get point preferences, localized point preferences. And the goal is to take these preferences and do something with them. Either convert them into something that looks like, like relevance judgments, or build an evaluation metric that looks directly at these preferences. So how can you do that? How can you convert these guys to something that looks like relevance judgments? And the way this is done is you, <clears throat> you look at something called click deviation. Right? So uh, click deviation is an approximation for relevance. What is click deviation? You measure two quantities. You measure a click rate for a particular document, D, in position P in the ranking. And then you measure the expected click rate for position P in the ranking. Right? So that quantity, right, say uh, this particular document, the kitten, right, in rank 1, was clicked a certain number of times. Right? What I do is I subtract from that the over all types of documents, how many times did the users click on, uh, on a document in position one? Now, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to, um, why, do, why do we need to subtract the expected click rate uh, at a rank? At a rank? Uh, the reason you need that is uh, because the search engines have trained you 
to click on the first documents in the ranking. So it's uh, at this point, uh, you are used to your search engine being reasonably good for simple queries. So you are used to good results appearing in the first uh, five or so ranks. So you can do a simple experiment. You can take a thousand people and they'll do their queries. And then instead of the normal query results, you just give them random stuff. And they'll still, a lot of them will still instinctively click on things at rank one and rank two and rank three. Right? Just because by this point, the search engines have conditioned you to clicking on the first things in the ranking. So irrespective of what you put in rank one, rank one is the most likely thing to get clicked on. Okay? So when you're computing your estimate of relevance for the kitten, you have to factor out the effect of the position in which the kitten was shown. Right? And the way you do that is you, you subtract the expected click rate for that given uh, rank. Right. So what you get out of this is something that is kind of similar to relevance. So for, if for a given query, a certain document was clicked often in a certain position, that suggests that that document was probably uh, relevant. Now that will of course vary because um, you know, some people are flawed and they'll click on the kitten, some people are honest and they'll click on the algorithm. Um, but, uh, but overall, once you average it out over thousands and millions of users, hopefully things will wash out and you will have numbers that um, sort of correlate with uh, relevance for documents. So that's how you, uh, that's how you approximate relevance. Uh, the other way is to use these preferences directly, and that's what we're going to do in the next lecture.